Okay, so I'm coming back for the second crack at this because <sighs> corporate feminism is the most infuriating thing in the world. And this is exactly what this is. And the feminist is going to lap it up. They're not even going to think. They're not going to. They're not going to be concerned about capitalism and about how they're being manipulated. They're just suddenly going to be like, "Oh yeah, bravo!" Clapping like bloody seals, right? You've spoken a couple of times about authenticity. Imagine a Procter and Gamble executive coming on and saying, "Yeah, we want Gillette's authentic voice to be like social justice," and then going, "Right, okay, yeah, that that's speaking to me about authenticity." Do you think that's the biggest challenge for brands approaching these conversations about masculinity in their marketing? <laughs> that's the biggest problem. It's hard for brands to find the unique, authentic voice in the space. Yeah, but that's because that's because it seems shallow and tepid and obviously confected to be simply a presentation that will appeal to a social issue, hopefully get your name in the papers in a positive way, and get a bunch of people that you can say, oh, look at those evil misogynist trolls, or toxic men are, are attacking us. Quick, defend us SJWs, and they'll leap to your defense. Anyway, that insight it becomes the root of what we build the story around. And these become our most effective brand campaigns in terms of building the business and creating equity for the brand. Because that's what it's about. It's about building the business and getting money. Nine out of ten consumers say they have a more positive view of a brand when it supports a social cause. Nine out of ten consumers are just being played by Gillette in this way, in, a, in, a, in their desire to socially engineer the, the society in which they sell their product, as if they have a right to do that. I suppose they are free, technically, to do it, but really, we have to start making sure that we don't support this kind of thing. This is, I mean, this surely is not what people want to see. Surely is not what the left wants to see. Giant corporations engineering society in order to make money that's surely not what the left is okay with well i mean like i would have thought so but corporate feminism is absolute cancer anyway more than half of consumers say that a brand that has shared beliefs with them influences their purchase decisions i can't even imagine thinking oh yeah that's that's a good thing that brands do this but hey i mean i'm sure i'm guilty of it I'm sure i'm guilty of cheering on a, a, a red-pilled company like wendy's <laughs> Also, Costa Coffee, who sponsor me. <laughs> I'm going to denounce like Costa Coffee now. They don't really sponsor me. I just always like to have a tea when I'm doing an interview or something. Anyway, so we know finding, finding voice is important. And to my point on authenticity, it's got to be done in a way that connects with the brand origin or it doesn't have that same impact. See, this is entirely manufactured. This is like... This has been done by focus groups and studies and in a boardroom by people who don't give a shit about any of this, but they are interested in building their business and creating equity for the brand at the expense of any social movement they're doing it for. I'm sure you're thinking about these issues a lot because you're also the gender equality executive sponsor of Procter and Gamble. Yeah, I bet they fuck. I bet she fucking is. Can you tell me a little more about P&G's efforts around gender equality? P&G picked three areas. Firstly, is the world's largest advertiser. We should use our voice in advertising and media to tackle bias. As if that's their job. Second, we want to use our corporate voice to tackle bias. Okay. So bias is a problem for you. Which includes improving access to STEM education for girls or working with governments in developing countries to change legislation so women have access to work. Good luck. The things we're working on are very education and economic opportunity based. Third, it's the work we're doing to get inside to get 50-50 representation. It's a good thing that it's about feminism really, isn't it? I mean, imagine if they were doing this about anything else. How close is PNG to achieving that? More than 47% of our managers globally are women. At more than junior levels, we are 50-50 and making very consistent progress all the way to the top of the house. In terms of our global leadership council, 40% of our company leaders are women. We've really been intentional in stepping that up. So almost half of their workforce, as, or their managers, or their decision-making executives are women, and they've decided that masculinity is a problem. Okay. We've really been intentional in stepping up, so we're very committed to achieving equal representation at all levels. We're very transparent. Yes, and honestly, I should thank you for that, to be honest. Speaking about representation at different levels, women are usually... Oh, it's all about women. I love how... Oh, God. Like, do we have anything to say about men that isn't negative, just out of interest? No, but let's, let's talk about women. They're the victims here, basically. 
Women are usually underrepresented in senior executive roles. Well, they've just demonstrated they're not. Do you feel pressure to change that? And what's your experience been in ascending the corporate ladder? We think, I don't know, she doesn't, yeah. We think about representation of women from every angle and every vector of intersectionality. <laughs> full on, full on social communist nonsense. Women of color, LGBTQI. God, these are so woke. People with disabilities. What about fat people? What about short people? What about ugly people? What about those who are attractively privileged? But anyway, we're very international intentional about this, of course, and this is something our company believes in deeply. From my personal experience, I've worked over 30 years for a company with great values. Even yeah, what about before they held these values? I mean, this hasn't been Procter and Gamble or Gillette's main thrust through the last 30 years. So when did you adopt these values? Just out of interest. I also grew up in a very equal household. My dad was a farmer, my mum was a school teacher. Doesn't sound equal. Sounds like one does a lot more labour than another. My dad did things at home in the winter when he was not in the field, and my mum did more of it in the summer. That's just how it was. Then I went to Toronto to work for Procter & Gamble. It was the most diverse city in the world. I always had women around me. But fascinating. Who didn't always have women around them? In 1993, I moved to Hunt Valley, Maryland, and joined my first all-male lead team. Well, that must have been hell. My manager said at the time, we're so happy to have you on the, your, our team because you're going to add diversity to our team. So as far back as 1993, and I kind of stopped, you know, I had this quizzical look on my face and said, is that because I'm Canadian? <laughs> eh, I can't even do a Canadian accent. It was only two weeks later when I realized it was referring to me being a woman. Right, yeah, so you you didn't even think about the way that this was going until you got to the you got to Hunt Valley, Maryland, and they started make, putting it in your head that this is something you have to be worried about. You weren't even thinking I'm being held back because I'm a woman. You were worried about being held back because you're a Canadian. Or like anyway, so equality is a core value for me, is it? And Procter & Gamble of the opportunity and influence to impact it. It just sound, reads like a corporate statement, doesn't it? Women are important to our business. That's ve very authentic. Very authentic. Women are important to our business. Oh, thanks so much, Procter & Gamble. I feel like you care. How can high-level male executives or male employees in general contribute to these conversations about masculinity and equality within a company? I'm very curious myself. It can't just be about women in order to make us... In order in order to get us to an equal environment. That's right, men have to do their part in helping women achieve, despite the fact they're in competition with them. What we have to do is make sure that all of us are understanding why it's important to build a more equal world, because it's better for businesses, better for economy, and better for the communities we live in. Now, it's not better for the men who are going to get necessarily held back because they're men, you know, what would, what would normally be called illegal discrimination. It's not better for them. But you have to understand, it's better for businesses. It's better for the economy. You know, it's not better for you, but it's better for other people. Just do your part, that's all I'm saying. It's just a better place for all of us. Which is why you need a pay cut. <laughs> and that happened at the BBC, by the way. But it does, and they had to beg as well. They had to beg like people like Jon Snow to take a pay cut because they couldn't legally just cut their pay because that would have been gender discrimination. And so they just did it. But it does take men and women. When I look at the corporate on the corporate women's leadership team, do you have a corporate men's leadership team? Do you have any men on the corporate women's leadership team? Just out of interest which is an executive level team from different disciplines, regions, and business units, I look around the table and I was like, where are the guys? We have to have men at the table. <laughs> See, there, wasn't, there weren't any fucking men there. Look, you can't help yourselves. And so we have men on our corporate women's leadership team. I feel really good about that. Yeah, you had to go and do that. <laughs> right, so well done. Honestly, right, I shouldn't complain. C congratulations for advancing men in the same way that you advance women by design by by rote by numbers by re like by engineering it you don't just leave people to do what they want you you are crafting this we are also working in partnership with Catalyst, a non-profit that helps companies blah, 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 and we have a program focused on uh, on the role men can play within our organization maybe they can just do their jobs 
Catalyst Men Adv Advocating Real Change, the MARC program, is an exper experiential workshop which is really about driving deeper understanding of privilege and power bias. So this is where you get properly indoctrinated. In order for us to make progress, we have to understand how power and bias show up every day, and we have to know how to deal with them. I <sighs> is it your job to police people's biases? Because people's biases are their preferences. That's what you're saying. And, and to check their power levels. <laughs> so that's been one example of training that we've done so that we can have the necessary conversations and go deep enough. I, d I just don't like, the, I don't like the surface level of this, let alone however many layers down you have to go. You've got to go deep on this stuff. You can't just leave it at the surface if you want to make progress. <sighs> what is your advice to other companies and brands who are trying to approach conversations about masculinity and conversations about gender equality, whether that's internally at the company or through marketing? Don't. Just fuck off. Sell me a goddamn product. For the love of God, why can't I just have companies who want to sell me shit? Why do, I, why do we have to live in a society where it comes like, actually, we need to engineer some stuff. It, what, can't you just do some fucking charity? God. Just do some charity work, like normal companies. For the love of God. One of the biggest issues that we continue having to address, whether it's inside the companies of the workplace or whether it's in the world around us, is this notion of bias. Yes, you do seem obsessed with something that is inherent to every human, including yourselves, and apparently you're unable to check your own progressive bias. But anyway, not everyone thinks like you. We'll just carry on. That becomes a narrative that becomes an excuse for not making progress. Progress for at all, at all, all costs, for progress sake, to where? Well, communism, frankly, for the capitalist com company, social communism, because at least it's not going to affect their bottom line, because honestly, the left at the moment are just such hypocrites when it comes to their position on corporations that they don't care. They just don't care. As long as people are parroting their nonsense at them, they're fine with it. But I what I love about this is that Procter & Gamble are going to be sitting there essentially breeding revolutionary communists with their own activism. I wonder if it'll ever catch up on them. For example, there's not enough women in the pipeline. That's false. There are so many things that get perpetuated through biases. The biggest issue we have to deal with is the insidiousness of that. Oh yeah, there's a lot that's insidious about this, I tell you. My biggest piece of advice to other business leaders and other companies is you must be intentional approaching conversations about masculinity and gender equality. So you must be intentional with your cultural Marxism. Has got to be aligned, the approaching these conversations has got to be aligned with your values and you've got to believe it deeply. And it has to be driven from the top all the way through the organization. See, it's a top down in initiative to impose social justice values on a corporation, whether the people in the corporation want them or not, whether you believe these things or not, and the, like I say, you've got to believe it deeply. So essentially, and I love the way they say belief, essentially it's like a bunch of religious zealots who have taken over a corporation and are now going to impose their religion on all the people below, using bias as Satan and equality as, as, as God. And it's just like, okay, but what if I'm an atheist? <laughs> What if I just want to be left alone to do the job that I'm being paid to do, the boring fucking work of stamping whatever I fucking got to do, TPS forms, you know? Why can't I just be left alone to do my job? Everyone talks about inclusive environments and all the rest of it, but it's insufficient to talk about it. You, <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Oh, fuck off. You must be very intentional in the work that you do in every day, every day to bring this to life, whether it's in your business strategy, whether it's in a more disciplined and deliberate approach to talent management and talent systems, to driving equality-based policies and practices. Now, one of the things you've got to remember is it, when you're hiring in favor of women, you're deliberately hiring against men. You are deliberately like, uh, leaving men out of a hiring process. You're discriminating against them, not to discriminate in favor of someone else. I think that there probably are some laws in the US that this actually violates. You would think they would be a bit more careful about this. But hey, what do I know? I'm just some pleb on the internet. Frankly, to broadening our definition of what a leader looks like. The way they look really is not very relevant. The things they do are. Because too often we just default to this dated stereotype of what a leader looks like. It's a man, isn't it? It's a fucking man. We've got to have targets and quotas with international actions underneath. There we go. 
They're gonna they're just going to have female quotas. And I guess in female dominant spaces they'll have male quotas. <sighs> Fucking can we just drop the quotas? Is that too much to ask? And that's got to be led at the top of the company. So that's my one important word for you, intentionality. Well, there we go. I mean, this is just everything cancerous about corporate social justice. This is the Pepsi commercials. This is the Gillette ads. This is the mindset that produces these kind of social justice activist companies and marketing campaigns. They're designed to build the brand. They are designed to create equity for the company. They're designed to get you involved because they think that you're going to be hooked on it. And they are designed to engineer society around them. Possibly worth not playing their game. That's all I'm saying. Possibly worth um, not doing this, doing something else with the time. Buying from a company that isn't interested in changing you.